This week we're going to start to use the slow speed handpiece. Uh, so I just want to give a brief introduction to the slow speed handpiece and the burrs that we will be using um, in these exercises. So just to recall, uh, we have the high speed handpiece with high speed burrs and they can be diamond grid covered or tungsten uh, carbide uh, burrs and the job chiefly uh, for those um, instruments are to remove enamel or to cut through enamel. And enamel is the hardest substance in the body so it needs uh, the high speed handpiece run at high speed, water cooled to prevent friction um, and the diamond grit or tungsten carbide to cut efficiently through enamel. But once we've accessed um, the dentine appropriately with enough access and outline form and convenience form, we should then assess the dentinal lesion and the removal of necrotic dentine or infected dentine from that area should be done by either um, hand instruments such as the um, excavator or that you can use the slow speed handpiece with steel burrs. Um, and here you can see um, a round shaped burr and very clearly being indicated for use in uh, dentine. Remember dentine is not as hard as enamel so it doesn't require um, a high speed handpiece to cut through unless it's sound. And if it's sound, why are we removing it uh, in relation to caries? There might be other reasons we would use a high speed handpiece on dentine to remove it. Cavi uh, crown preparation, for example, where we are actually removing sound dentine. But in the management of a carious lesion, the dentine or, or the only areas of dentine that we should be removing uh, or, or um, wanting to remove are necrotic areas. And they are soft, so they don't require a high speed handpiece. So just to introduce you to the slow speed handpiece, there's a coupling or coupler, there's the handpiece itself. Now the head of the handpiece can vary depending on what sort of handpiece you are using. Um, and we've got three here. The top uh, is the uh, switch swing hat, uh, latch grip um, head. Uh, and you'll find this um, on the Profi heads that we have in the simulation lab. So when you're doing Profi prophylaxis with a profi, profi cup, uh, you use the swing latch. And that's a manual latch where you swing the latch to one side, insert the burr into the chuck, and then swing the latch back again. There's also a spring latch where you push against the um, spring latch. Uh, it will allow you then to place the burr in the chuck and then you release the pressure from the spring latch and it will spring back and lock. The one that we'll be using um, for cutting in the simulation lab is the push button latch grip and this is similar to the friction grip in the high speed handpiece where you will push down on the cap, uh, insert the burr, uh, rotate it until it slips down into place and then release the pressure from the cap check the burr by pulling against it to ensure that it is completely locked into the head. Uh, we don't want it falling into the mouth of the patient. The burrs that we will be using for caries removal in the simulation exercises will be round burrs. So there's a number of different size burrs that you may want to select. And the general rule as we saw on the, on the second slide is choose the largest burr that will fit the area of dentine that you want to remove. So if we had a, um, a dentinal lesion like this, so let's just um, say that the red area is the necrotic or infected dentine that we want to remove and then around that we've got an area perhaps of infected, affected dentine that we don't want to remove. So this blue area here is affected dentine that we want to leave in place and mineralize. But we definitely want to remove this necrotic um, dentine, the red area. So what we would do is select a burr that fits pretty much the shape of the infected dentine. So our burr of choice would be one of that size. And it could be here a size 9. Depending on the size of the lesion it could be a size 5. But you look at the lesion and then determine which of these burrs you might want to use. We may also have a lesion um, that um, appears 
like this. So if it's following along the um, if it's following along the um, fissure pattern of a tooth, for example, so this is in cross section. You might find that the necrotic or infected dentine on the on one part of the tooth is you know, three millimetres or so, but then there's an area of deeper penetration here. So what you might want to do is to remove this area here with a larger burr. Okay, we don't want to take away the sound in team, but we need to eliminate this. So for this area here, we would select a slightly smaller burr um, to these two here, so that we're only removing the area um, of necrotic or infected dentine. So you may actually, uh, in the removal, complete removal of the lesion, use a number of different sizes. So let's just have a look at why it is we're using this round burr. We've got a selection of steel burrs here. Uh, on, the side, on the far side there is the inverted cone. In the centre is the uh, straight or cylindrical burr. And then we have the round burr. And if we think about the shape, that these burrs will cut into the tooth. So if we cut with this one, we'll end up with this sort of shape. Um, but we'll get quite sharp line angles. And these are areas of um, concentration of stresses and, and can lead to fracture. So you want to avoid those sharp line angles. This uh, straight burr will also create uh, these sharp line angles. So we would use these burrs for other purposes rather than removing um, uh, carious dentine. But with this burr here, you can see that we would create a shape like this with rounded internal line angles and it conforms to the shape of the carious lesion. So this would be the burr of choice. And just to um, expand on that discussion, the good thing about the round burr is you can hold it at different angles and still create the same um, internal line, line angles or shapes. So with this one, for example, if we used it straight down into the dentine, we would end up with something like this. If we were to use it as an angle to the floor of the cavity, we might end up with something like that or something like that. Okay. Whereas with the round um, burr, you can use it from different angles, but achieve each time the rounded line angles. So you can come from different angles to eliminate the necrotic dentine. So it's quite a, an effective um, bird to use for um, caries removal and dentine.